May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for our strength and our redeeming. 
Imagine being deemed qualified to be Jesus' human father. The responsibility would be a huge one for the average individual. The task at hand is enormous in preservation and restoration for Joseph. Which brings us to what does preservation and restoration look like? Let's take a look at historical building that has been kept in a fantastic condition even after centuries of being built. In supporting such preserved buildings, the responsible parties know techniques proven to work in preserving and restoring. Suppose you take ownership of a historic structure. In that case, you are accepting responsibility for its preservation so it continues to have a future. A building can only be maintained for centuries if the owners affirm current practices to maintain the structure. They must also be open to new, updated techniques that become available with modern technologies. It is not to say that all old methods are dismissed. On the contrary, you maintain utilizing these methods combined with the new, updated approaches. When you turn your back on these modern approaches, you allow your building to deteriorate and fall apart. You can't point fingers at that point accusing the professionals who attempted to help you. Suppose these professionals tried to help you restore the decaying structure. Then you turn away or force them to utilize old practices that are no longer practical. In that case, you are to blame for its destruction. Joseph knew what was at stake, and he didn't want to be the cause of the body of Christ's destruction. Instead, he worked with God through trust, faith, on a journey to provide Jesus with a well-supported, nurturing, and loving home to follow for his growth into what he would become. He worked on preserving relationships. And Jesus being born human, God attempted to preserve God's creation, heaven and earth. Through this restoration, God brought new ways through Jesus to love one another. Additionally, Jesus brought attention to the injustices that continued even after God intervened through time. The question remains, how are we to avoid inflating our egos? How do we prevent nationalism and patriotism above God? Where is the line in preventing violence against others in the forms of body, spirit, or mind? Ultimately, the methods you choose to preserve and restore what God asks of you is your choice. Choose wisely, as previously generations have already critically injured the masses. We must work with the Spirit of God to restore that spirit to the heart of humanity. Amen. At this time, we invite to come forward those who wish to affirm their baptism by uniting with us in this household of faith. Jacob, Jasmine, Alexandra. Friends in Christ, we are all received into the church through the sacrament of baptism. 
These people have found nurture and support in the midst of the family of Christ. Through prayer and study, they have been led by the Holy Spirit to affirm their baptism and to claim in our presence their covenantal relationship with Christ and the members of this church. They are here for service to Jesus Christ, using the gifts which the Holy Spirit bestows. You are no longer strangers, but sojourners. You are equally citizens of the saints and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus alone being the cornerstone and whose structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in Christ. In whom you also are built into it for a dwelling place in God and His Spirit. Jacob, Jasmine, Alexa, you desire to affirm your baptism into the faith and family of Jesus Christ. Do you renounce the powers of evil and desire the freedom of new life in Christ? I do. Do you profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciple, to follow in the ways of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness the work and the word of Jesus Christ as best you are able? I promise to stand up for Christ. Do you promise according to the grace given you to grow in the Christian faith and to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's mission in all the world? Let us unite with the church in all times and places in confessing our faith in the true God. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in the true man, Jesus, to reconcile and meet you, who works in us and others by his spirit. We trust him. He calls us to be his church, to celebrate his presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our, our judge and our hope, in life and death, in life beyond death. God, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. By your baptism, you were made one with us in the body of Christ, the church. Today we rejoice in your pilgrimage of faith, which has brought you to this time and place. We give thanks for every community of faith that has been your spiritual home. And we celebrate your presence in this household of faith. Do you promise to participate in the life and mission of the family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God and enlisting in the work of this local church as it serves this community and the world? I promise for the help of God. Let us, the members of Christ Church, United Church of Christ, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. We welcome you with joy in the common life of this church. We promise you our friendship and prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the Church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses to our risen Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, and on behalf of the Christ Church, United Church of Christ, we extend to you the hand of Christian life, welcoming you in the company of this local church. O oh God, we praise you for calling us to faith and for gathering us into the church, the body of Christ. We thank you for your people gathered in this local church and rejoice that you have increased our community of faith. Together, may we live in the spirit, building one another up in love, sharing in life and worship of the church and serving the world for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. May we look at others as if through our, your eyes, thus judging more loving, and seeing them like us, as not perfect or finished, but as work in progress that will be completed in due time. Amen.
Now, at this time, if anybody is celebrating their birthday or anniversary at this time, please stand. <laughs> May God's blessing be upon you as you celebrate another year around the sun. May God continue to journey with you as you grow, not just physically, mentally, but also spiritually and theologically. And may the grace of Jesus Christ always be with you. Amen. And we also have our other siblings, uh, Michael Hosian, Terry Wester, and then Julie and Gary Fritz celebrating their anniversary. Lord God, we lift up all of our siblings who are in need and those we have yet to meet. We pray for Gary and Helen as they lost their fur baby. We know how they treat their pets as if they were their children. And only you understand how deep of a pain that is. We pray for our siblings as empties who continue to push forward day in, day out. We also pray for our sister Barbara, for our brother Bill, and for all those who find themselves sick in one form or another. We pray for those who are hungry, for those who are cold. May they feel your warmth and embrace. God of love and mercy, thank you for your great gift of your child, Jesus Christ who fills with us all that we need. Merciful God, we are fully aware that not all of your children are able to bask in joy or peace during the season. We pray for peace within all walls, walls within our homes, walls that surround each city and town. We pray that during the season of Advent, we may usher your promise of salvation into our lives and that we may share the good news of our Savior with others. We pray that the promise of your birth may be the promise that we live in and share at home, at work, and at school. May we be moved to compassion and action in your name. We pray through Jesus Christ, and in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the collective longing for a taste of your kingdom, on earth we join in echoing the prayer Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved. There are so many ways to spend our time, to spend our money, to spend our emotional and spiritual resources. Let us contribute to the work of God through Jesus Christ. May it be so as bring our gifts together.
precious one, you have restored us in body and soul. You have given us abundant life, more than we could have ever imagined. You have made your face shine upon us to make us whole. Holy One, bless now the offerings of our hearts and lives, that we might shine as you shine and share your blessings with others. Amen. Please stand for our benediction. Beloved, welcome to the grace of God. As you welcome the coming of Christ, go in peace to love and serve God.